Good morning. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Um, I'm Kevin, I'm the CTO at LightSpark, and we are super excited to be here to tell you a little bit about what we've been working on and how we're trying to make Lightning easier for our partners. Can you see the slides? They're on. Okay. Okay, so before we get into that, let's do just a little bit of history. So the same folks that came up with the internet and worked on the internet as we know it today originally envisioned a payments protocol native to the internet. Now, sadly, this was never actually implemented, but at LightSpark, we think that Lightning and Bitcoin can be this protocol of money on the internet. And Taj, one of my coworkers, was actually the co-author of the original Lightning white paper. And we are trying to take his original vision and make it into a reality where you can just stream money on the internet as easily as you can send TCP packets today. Now, unfortunately, Lightning is pretty difficult right now. So let's ask everyone's favorite friend, ChatGPT, what it thinks about running a Lightning node and how difficult <coughs> it is to run a mainstream Lightning node. So you'll see here, ChatGPT lists out a whole bunch of reasons of why running a Lightning node is actually quite complex. And this is not all inclusive. And as we at LightSpark started to play around with Lightning, we tried running it on Raspberry Pis, we tried running it on servers, and we found it to be immensely complex as well. And the same refrain held true when we talked to partners that were Bitcoin native and had been on Bitcoin for a long time. A lot of them started down the path of Lightning and decided it was just too complex and wasn't worth the effort to actually integrate to Lightning. Now, why is this? So if you look at channels, they are quite a bit different than your typical L1. So even companies that were very familiar with Bitcoin L1 felt that channels were an unfamiliar concept. Who do you open channels to? How much do you put in your channels? When do you need to rebalance and how do you do that? How do you actually get successful payments on Lightning? How do you establish inbound liquidity? Do I have to pay someone for inbound liquidity? All these are foreign concepts that are actually quite difficult. And to just run a Lightning node, a lot of companies actually have full-time people running their node and managing that node. So at LightSpark, what we're trying to do is make that simple. Completely abstract away the concept of channels and of nodes and just make it a very simple interface. So if you forget everything else we say today, the things to remember, we're trying to do an enterprise-grade solution built for businesses, completely abstract away all the concepts of Lightning, and just make it a very simple rails to send payments, where you have this open, interoperable standard where you can have instant settlement and negligible fees. And then we want to make it super easy for companies to integrate. So let's look briefly at what we've built. You'll see here just a, a basic sign-up flow. You fill out just a little bit of information, and then we'll start spinning up your node. It just takes a couple seconds and you'll be onboarded and you'll land on our dashboard. And our dashboard is designed to be just a simple, clean, streamlined interface where you can see some basic information. You can see the amount sent, received, average transaction time. You can flip over to test mode and test it for free and play around with fake money. And then you have your four basic actions at the bottom. So you can deposit funds, you can withdraw funds, and you can send and receive. And you'll notice there's no notion of channels or nodes here. It's just a very simple, clean send and receive interface. So let's walk through a quick example of a payment request. So you just put in your amount, you put in some note, and you'll get a QR code. And you can pay this from any Lightning enabled wallet, which is really part of the beauty of Lightning, is that it's an open protocol, so that it's not just LightSpark nodes can pay to LightSpark nodes, it's anyone that's on Lightning can pay to anyone. Um, and you'll see here we completed the payment. We were able to onboard and get going in just a matter of a few seconds and receive a payment. And there's no opening up channels and trying to figure out how to get liquidity. Now, we don't actually expect most of our partners to spend most of their time on this web portal. We expect that they'll be doing integrations through our APIs and SDKs. And what we're trying to do is make that very simple for them, kind of meet developers where they are. If they want to do custodial or non-custodial, if they want to do it in Java, JavaScript, Python, Rust, whatever. So we have a basic GraphQL interface, so you can integrate directly to that, or you can choose from a bunch of SDKs that we have. And here you'll see an example of our JavaScript SDK, 
where we create an invoice, we decode an invoice, and we pay an invoice, and all in just a few lines of code. So there's no huge effort to onboard. In fact, our last partner actually onboarded in less than 48 hours. So if you want to try to beat that record, please go for it. Um, there's just a few lines of code to actually integrate. Three APIs that actually really matter. One to query your account information, one to send a payment, and one to receive a payment. And as you see here, it's just a couple lines of code and you're actually on board and ready to go. Now let's give an example of the types of things that we are hoping our partners can build on top of this once they're able to connect to an easy to use lightning integration. So you'll see here an example that we built, a Chrome extension to stream money in real time. So you can imagine a content creator who is trying to monetize their content. They have a video playing, and for every few seconds, you stream a few sats to them. Now, this is something that's actually really powerful because it wasn't really possible before on Fiat Rails where it might take days to settle, it might cost you 15 cents for every penny that you send over. And we are hoping that our partners are able to continue building unique experiences on top of Lightning and take advantage of this open interoperable standard with negligible fees. And I will now hand it over to Christian who will talk a little bit more about how we did some of this. Thank you, Kevin. It's really a pleasure to be here today with all of you. Uh, the great feature about Lightning is that Lightning is Bitcoin, right? So if you love the security and safety assumptions of Bitcoin, there's nothing else you need to trust. But that comes with a new set of technical, economic, and market design challenges. So the job is actually pretty hard. Let's be frank, building on Lightning is not simple. The first challenge is that you're locking liquidity. You're locking your precious Bitcoin into these pairwise channels. And Bitcoin liquidity is expensive. I'm going to use a ride-sharing analogy to drive home some of the key points and challenges that we faced in building and scaling LightSpark. And here on the map, you're looking at, at the Miami uh, you know, uh, outline. Whenever Uber and Lyft were launching in a new city, what they would do is essentially try to seed the market, subsidize drivers so that they would wait ready for you know, the few early passengers to take a ride. Bitcoin on Lightning today is the, like those early drivers, refreshing the app, killing time, hoping you know, for someone to actually show up. And that's really expensive. If we want Lightning to scale, if you want the system to be sustainable and compete with established payment networks, we need to drive the velocity of Bitcoin, the velocity of Lightning transactions way, way up. And that's kind of what Uber and Lyft realized after a while, right? You can sustain and jumpstart the, the engine, but then it needs to be really viable at scale. The good news is that together we can really get there, and I'll show you a preview of what's to come. Managing liquidity and ensuring that Bitcoin is put to good use is really step one. When you're trying to move from A to B, when you're trying to send a payment over the Lightning Network, uh, you need to make sure that liquidity is available as needed as you're performing that operation. And that can be challenging because routing on Lightning today looks like a driver that's taking random left and random right turns trying to get you to your destination. I think we've all been there, you know, driver with bad GPS or maybe no map, trying to get you somewhere. And on Lightning, often what happens is that the driver doesn't even know. Am I about to jump on a highway? Is it a dirt road? Is there a roadblock today? Is there too much traffic? It's really a nightmare. And this is kind of the problem we're trying to solve. The good news is that you can solve both for efficient liquidity and for optimal smart routing in one single operation. This is where what's really interesting as we started digging into all the challenges of Lightning, we realized that we could reframe the problem as a prediction problem. Moving liquidity where it needs to be is very similar to when you know, a large conference like this wrap, wraps up and Uber and Lyft are already sending those drivers around here so that you don't have to wait for too long. They know of these recurring events, they know, you know when a sport game ends, and that's what they're trying to do. We can do the same for Bitcoin liquidity on Lightning. And once you do that, the velocity of Lightning goes way, way up, and that's truly exciting. Enter LightSpark Predict. Again, the job of predict is going to be a prediction problem, making sure that the liquidity is there only when it is needed. Bitcoin idle on the network is expensive. We want Bitcoin to move, and we want Bitcoin to move fast. Lightspark predict does a number of jobs, but I'm going to focus on the three core ones. The first one is building the roads for you, establishing the right connections. You may wonder, what roads should I even build? And it turns out that there's no one size fits all. 
actually every customer has different lightning needs, whether they're receiving more or sending more or a combination of the two, more domestic, more global, all of that changes as the LightSpark uh, stack kind of captures information about uh, those transit flows. What's interesting here is that a lot of lightning wasn't properly measured, so we built our own metrics. One that we pay a lot of attention to is called conductivity. Here we're stealing from the world of physics, the idea being that a node with very high conductivity is a node that will beam your sats quickly through lightning. But that's just the first step. Once you have the roads, you also need a good map. You need to know, you know what are the traffic conditions today? Is liquidity suddenly completely unbalanced? What used to be a massive challenge on Lightning, a channel that has become completely imbalanced because maybe everybody is paying a merchant, is now an opportunity to route traffic in the other direction. Predict does all of this behind the scene so that you don't have to worry about any of the complexity. And the last step is iterating and evolving these models dynamically. Because as it turns out, the challenge of predicting what liquidity needs to be is a really difficult one. And so when you see failures, when you see delays on the road, you need to incorporate that information so that you can deliver a simple, reliable, intuitive, and secure lightning experience. We see a lot of potential in the convergence between AI and lightning. The two technologies are kind of made for each other. Now you may ask, okay, how do you know any of this is working, right? AI tends to be a black, black box and you throw a bunch of data in, you see kind of what, what comes out. We obsess about two metrics. One is success rates. We don't tolerate failures. Uh, and, and failures come in many shapes and forms. It's not just your payment didn't deliver. It's your payment was slow. If you're used to traditional payment methods and people tapping at a merchant, that's almost instantaneous. That's what consumers expect, and we can bring that on Lightning. The second dimension is more into the weeds of the economics of Lightning. It's velocity of money. When we started, we were two to three times more capital efficient, so we were faster than some of the leading alternatives. At each iteration of our model, you saw those improvements on the graph, the yellow bars. Uh, but these improvements are not linear, and that's really wonderful news. We have jumps, discrete jumps in quality of the service that we can provide. As we drive that liquidity and velocity up, Lightning starts to be competitive with every payment system out there, and that's truly exciting. Now, Optimizing routes, managing liquidity, all of that is really complex, but it's just a starting point. You need to make it extremely simple and easy, like Kevin was showing you, to bring people onto Lightning, people that have not explored Lightning or that have explored it and then said, well, no, this is too complex. Which is why yesterday we announced the LightSpark Wallet SDK. We're truly excited about this new component and building block, mostly because it's not gonna be us building those experiences, it's gonna be all of you in this room. You can take it for a spin. It exists on iOS, Android. You can build it in the browser. The goal is to integrate LightSpark and, and Lightning, of course, into every possible payment experience, from digital wallets to exchanges to games, uh, creative economy platforms. It's really up to your creativity to discover how can you build new delightful payment experiences on top of Lightning. We think this is the way Lightning wins because it can exceed and outcompete everything else possible on traditional payment rails. And so this is you know, for you to take a spin and really build the future. We worked on starting to onboard wallets. There's a lot more coming uh, down the pipe. As you know, we onboarded uh, the first uh, regulated bank, Xapple Bank, which has been in the Bitcoin game since the very, very beginning. And it was truly exciting to get them on layer two, to get them on Lightning. Yesterday, we also announced the leading crypto assets exchange, very Bitcoin focused, in the Middle East, Rain. That's a team that was so fast in their integration. Uh, the, the, you know, the 48 hours Kevin was mentioning, they, they were truly amazing in, in, in building on the stack. But it doesn't stop there. And as we're trying to expand the set of participants beyond the original crypto community, and we're trying to onboard regulated financial institutions, they need other key pieces of infrastructure. They need to be able to show their regulators that what they're doing on layer one can also be done on layer two. So now, and this is kind of an opt-in feature, they can connect whatever feature they have on layer one to layer two, whether it's with chain analysis, TRM labs, or nota bene. That's gonna expand the set of participants all the way to banks and financial institutions. But Lightning wouldn't be complete without the use cases, right? So we need merchants, we need digital content, creator economy sales, all these digital interactions to really thrive, which is why we're truly excited to work with a team that has been doing this for a while with leading brands all across the world. They have a big presence in some of the Bitcoin countries, Flexa. 
With Flexa, now over 300 wallets will be Lightning accessible and we'll be able to do payments to merchants at over 50,000 locations in North America and abroad right out of the gate. The team is really excited to scale their Lightning experience because they think the barrier is really catching up with tap to pay, which I mean, I'm sure all of you use sometimes uh, when, when paying for things. Now the good news is that uh, you have three building blocks that you can take for a spin. Kevin talked at length about LightSpark Connect, making lights, light, Lightning extremely simple, extremely dynamic, and quick to use. Predict is all the complexity we don't want you to worry about. You know, we, we deal with the complexity so that you can build wonderful experiences. How do you build those experiences? Take the Wallet SDK for a spin. It's non-custodial, you can build both custodial experience and non-custodial. We're really breaking through new ground in how you can do this on Lightning. And we're really excited for you to really stress test it and give us feedback. So for all the Bitcoin Miami participants, that's your QR code. Download our, you know, download our and, and uh, uh, <laughs> log into our stack, sign up, come with ideas, and build the future for Lightning together with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down, but Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee, a city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th.